sometimes I told you so, just don't quite cut it. Hmm. Can you can you can you imagine you're talking like 2007, 2008? There's a couple of us. I mean, saying, guys, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Watch out. Watch what's going to happen. Now, every every single thing we said was going to happen all around the entire world is happening exactly as we said it would. And everyone has said, no, you're liars. Yeah, you're all so around. insane. You're, you're bigots. You're Islamophobes. It, if, if we say this is going to happen and then it happens, and but we were idiots for saying it's going to happen, what does that mean when it actually happens exactly the way we said it was going to happen? Kind of makes you the idiot, doesn't it? I don't know. Pretty, pretty much. Um, the pretty, issue is pretty good. So lots of people ask often about uh, what do you think about the future of Europe? Do you think that Islam will take over? Do you think there's a you know there there's a chance and 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 that kind of stuff? Yeah. I often feel like um, when it comes to many of the European countries, even when it comes to Germany, for example, I think there is still a sense of uh, of uh, rejecting such ridiculous ideas and objecting to objecting to islamization and all of that but uh to be honest with everything that is happening in the uk uh islamists in government islamists as uh you know ruling over cities islamists on councils islamists in the police force islamists in intelligence islamists as advisors and so on i feel like for the uk it is already too late there is simply no hope for the UK. It is too late. That's how I feel quite often. I see news of uh, people with walking around in the middle of London uh, on pro-Palestine protests with Sharia flags, with black flags with the Shahada on them, and yelling things like "Death to the Jews," you know, Khaybar, Khaybar, and things like that. And and the police is like, "Oh, okay, um, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll look into it." It's like. The, the English, the British have completely lost it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I don't think it, I don't think that Europe is going to, uh, fall to Sharia. I think it's basically they're, they're, they're getting past the time where they could have dealt with it peacefully. And I think eventually people will rise up and they'll vote for leaders who are going to do what they want. And, uh, it's basically once they, once they realize there's, there's just, uh, I can't put up with this anymore. And it is more, it is going to be far, far, far more difficult to leave this, leave this country to my kids. Uh, it, it, that's going to be, that would be worse just leaving things as it is than, uh, than doing some sort of uprising. But anyway, we tried to, we tried to deal with it peacefully as long as possible. And now you're getting to the point where you're not going to be able to deal with it peacefully and you're going to, uh, people, it's going to be horrible. But I, I think people are going to eventually say no. It's just going to be, it's just going to be really messy. So we all said, David, you're too optimistic. Many Europeans are too uncomfortable. Are too comfortable. Won't join army either. Won't rise up. There will be a Muslim attempt to overthrow France and Britain in around thirty years. I predict it. Uh, yeah, total nonsense, uh, Chloe. This is not me being optimistic. And you're saying they're too comfortable. Yeah, that's correct. They're too comfortable. And I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about they're go they're about to get really, really uncomfortable. And that's when things are going to change. This is not me, this is not me being optimistic. This is me being completely realistic uh, about genetic. Guess what? Genetically, these are the people who just went to massive world war uh, a few decades ago. Right. You had people to ah, we're going to take over the world and slaughter and, and kill everyone. Right. You had you had people who were like that. So biologically, they're the same people. They have different ideas. And yes, they've gotten comfortable and complacent. I'm saying as far as human beings go, you push them far enough. They will go full bloodbath mode if they have to. Uh, so about, this no. is not me being up. Yeah, this is not me being optimistic, saying, oh, yeah, Europeans are just going to stop. It's optimistic would have been, hey, they can do this, you know, they can do this and they're going to uh, wise up and they're going to exercise some common sense and deal with this problem peacefully. And so it's actually being pessimistic, being aware of human nature and how far human beings are willing to go when you push them too hard. It's very simple. You're going to keep pushing, keep pushing because the uh, Dawa guys and all their followers are, are much more desperate now. They're going to keep pushing harder and harder and trying to go further and further. What's going to happen? Europeans are going to put some leaders in law, uh, in charge 
who go uh, who are going to have a very different view of Islam than the current who go. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's happening. I'm not saying that's right now. I'm not saying they're not comfortable now. I'm saying that's going that's going to happen before before they submit to Islam. Uh, Miguel said it's a numbers game. They will win. America is next. Yeah. No. Inshallah. Not no, like America. That. America will not happen in America. I will. Yeah. Not let it happen in America. Yeah. It, yeah. It's. It's at. I mean. It's. It's almost delusional to say it'll happen. I mean, they make up one percent. If, if you want to at least make the argument for places like, uh, what is it like nine percent in in France or something like that, where you actually have massive numbers, um, they're not gaining people in the U.S. fast enough to to offset the apostasy rates, right? So they're losing people as fast as they're gaining people in the U.S. So do the math. If you want to do the math, do the math. Uh, also, they have the uh, they have the high birth rates, which has been what's carrying them through the apostasy situation. Their birth rates are also dropping rapid. Their birth rates also start dropping rapidly as they modernize and and westernize. So, the apostasy rate is growing, right? Growing. They had they already had a high birth rate. You eventually get to an apostasy rate that offsets the high birth rates. That's math. There's your math. Dear Wolfie says, do you think Islam will install Sharia law in Europe? Is it too late to make significant cultural change? I'm more pessimistic. I feel of, I fear all of the old cathedrals being torn down or Islamized. I don't want 1,000 Hagia Sophia's. David, uh, you didn't answer this question before, I think. Is there anything you want to say briefly about this? Yeah. Uh, so two things. One, you have what Islam actually... You have what Islam actually teaches and what these guys are I will actually buy your Ella. Yeah, you have what Islam teaches and what these guys actually want, what their actual goals are. So you have that, right? We were telling people about this 15 years ago. We're saying what Islam teaches and what the goals are. We were called liars and Islamophobes and bigots and so on. Now the guys are all admitting it. So there comes a point where the public catches on that it's not. Islamophobic and it's it's not Islamophobic conspiracy nonsense to say that Islam teaches these things. People eventually find out. Wait a minute, these guys are all admitting it now. So one, Europeans are going to find out that the people who were warning them were all correct, and that the their journalists and uh, politicians were the ones who are who are who are just making things up. Right. So one, people are going to find out the truth. The other thing is. Yes, once people have reached a certain level of comfort and complacency and so on, they'll put up with a lot because they don't want to ruin their comfort level. So if you go out and start saying, hey, there's a problem with Islam, then there's a backlash against you. And, oh, that's going to mess up my comfort level. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to ruin my comfort level. So I'll just I'll just keep my mouth shut for a while. There comes a point where you realize, oh, actually, Islam is, is a bigger threat. The spread of Islam is a much bigger threat. To my comfort level, and so I have no choice but to do it because I'm I'm not going to get I don't I don't get to just be comfortable for the rest of my life I don't get to they're going to subjugate me and it's going to suck so now I have to get out of my comfort zone and do something so that's what's going to happen. How about no? You can watch. I don't buy your Ella. Chloe says, Doctor Daily Wire. I hope you're right. However, I watch a lot of British news and YouTubers, lots of complaining and whining, but little action. Heaps of white Brits at Palestine protests. They confronted Mahiar Tusi. David, what do, you, what do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, if you're looking at things like right now, yeah, you got a bunch of morons. I'm not thinking about the way things are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not going to deal with it right now. I'm saying... It becomes inevitable at a point. That's the point. So yes, if you're looking at things right now, yeah, looks uh, looks uh, disastrous. If you think about human nature and you think about the trajectory, it's it's obvious where things go from here. If the trajectory continues as it is, then there is nothing to worry about, says David Wood. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stats. Miss Dravis says, if Europe limits Muslim immigration, how could closeted ex-Muslims hope to leave their home countries that still criminalize apostasy? That's one of the problems in the world. But I don't, I don't well, think that they should. I don't think they should ban immigration. I think they should just do it responsibly. Well, the the question is, if you're saying no Muslims here, then in order to uh, try to leave their country, they'd have to say, I'm a non-Muslim, which would get them into 
trouble in their country. That's the that's the critique here. But uh, I would say that the, everything is the assumption that things are going to stay the way they are now. Like, how would this work if this happened right now? It's not. Look at look at how things look at how rapidly things are changing in Saudi Arabia. I, I think you're going to have uh, Muslim nations sometime right around the corner having to uh, drop their uh, criminalization of apostasy. Going to happen. Watch it. In fact, you're going to have more people calling for apostasy laws here in the West from the Dawah guys than you're going to have in, in Muslim countries. Stay away from Islam. Alhamdulillah.